Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss that what is conjunctiva, what are the parts of conjunctiva, and what are the functions of the conjunctiva. So as we all know that conjunctiva is a transparent layer which covers the sclera, this white region, and uh, up to the limbus. Right, limbus is a junction between the cornea and the sclera. So this area, which is the a uh, junction between white and purple area is the this line is the limbus right so the uh, the conjunctiva is a structure that covers this whitish part which is the sclera and comes up to the limbus and it also covers the underlying eyelid surface so here in under the eyelid lower eyelid and the upper eyelid there is a layer of the conjunctiva as well these layers of the conjunctiva are actually the highly vascularized structure right so these are the highly vascularized structure which have many functions and have also some parts that play a very important role right under the eyelids there is some structure which is highly vascularized and transparent if you avert your eyelids you can see the red structure uh, on that pink red structure you can observe some blood vessels as well so basically those blood vessels are on th that pinkish area is not the conjunctiva but it is the uh, tarsal plate and other structures but the conjunctiva is the uh, transparent structure which is having the blood vessels which you observe on avoion of the eyelid so those blood vessels on the pinkish surface is the basically transparent structure right that is why you observe the back surface because the conjunctiva is the transparent structure so here you can observe that this is the conjunctiva right so the conjunctiva is absent on the cornea but it is present at the scleral junction and the corneo scleral junction and it is present under the eyelids right so this is conjunctiva and it is exposed to the dust wind heat and radiations right so it is more prone to in get infected so as we all know that when we open our eyes the whitish structure this whitish part is more exposed to the environment right it can get dust in it it can have any uh, particle or heats and radiations in the eye can be uh, they, these, this uh, conjunctiva is more exposed to the environment so it can get infected right so a lot of time you have seen that when any dust particle or any other foreign particle is thrown into your eye what happens that your eyes get red right so basically the eyes getting red is the which structure is involved in so that case the conjunctiva is involved right our sclera is in red the transparent structure which is the conjunctiva it gets uh, red and therefore blood vessels get uh, very uh, dilated and uh, there are some hypersensitive reactions in the conjunctiva so there are a lot of chances of conjunctiva getting um, infected by any particle uh, along with it i want to discuss that a lot of time you have observed that your whitish part on this whitish part something is a bit swollen whenever your eyes get red you when you are moving your eyes in any lateral or medial gaze you can observe that on the other side where the eyeball has just moved near any campus if you are moving your eyes the, towards the medial side what will happen what will happen actually that over here on the medial side where the cornea is now at the medial side so over here in this region you can see a little bit white swelling right so you can observe the white swelling a uh, transparent transparent swelling over there so the structure that is swollen that transparent structure on the whitish area which is swollen is actually the conjunctiva so it is just an um, indication of you or it's a way to just introduce yourself to the people who don't know about conjunctiva and are new to the field of optometry so they can understand that what is conjunctiva right so that is why i am explaining that whenever you are um, facing and facing a time when your conjunctiva gets red your eyes get red just observe it whenever you move your eyes in any of the gaze lateral or medial what will happen 
if you see towards the nose your move if you move your eyes towards the no uh, nose what will happen that you can observe a transparent structure which is swollen right so that uh, swollen structure is the conjunctiva basically i want to differentiate these structures uh, i want to you to differentiate the sclera and conjunctiva that is why i want you to observe if you see any case of red eye um, anyone who is experiencing red eye you can observe this uh, difference between the sclera and conjunctiva with this uh, technique right so we are done with the conjunctival introduction it is actually the thin translucent and vascular mucous membrane which covers the eyelid over here you can see it is covering the eyelid inner surface of the eyelid and it also covers the anterior eyeball which is the sclera it covers the sclera up to the corneo junction corneo scleral junction which is the limbus so limbus is the junction where the this junction i, I repeat that the Uh, limbus is the junction between the cornea and the sclera so this is cornea and this is the sclera and this line which you can observe here with this line which you observe here is the corneo scleral junction or the limbus right so now there are different parts of the conjunctiva as we have discussed that there is a conjunctiva which is on the white surface which is sclera and uh, there is a conjunctiva that is present under the eyelid so we have differentiated the type parts of conjunctiva on the basis of its presence in different parts right or in different structures so if the uh, these parts are palpebral conjunctiva then is the bulbar conjunctiva fornix and then the fourth one is the plica semilunaris right so uh on the basis of the presence of conjunctiva in different structures we have differentiated the parts of conjunctiva right so basically now the bulbar conjunctiva is the part of the conjunctiva that is present on this white structure right so the structure or the transparent membrane which is on the sclera or the whitish area is the bulbar conjunctiva so now what i was saying that on the basis of the presence of conjunctiva on different parts so the conjunctiva which is on the sclera is the bulbar conjunctiva in simple words it covers the anterior part of the eyeball it is loosely attached to underlying tissue sometimes you have observed that there is some transparent structure that moves up and down on the surface of the white area which is the sclera so that transparent structure that is moving up and down is the bulbar conjunctiva and why does it move because it is very loosely attached to this this tissue or this is very loosely attached to the sclera that is why it can move uh, it it gets detached from it a lot of times right so they are saying that on the surface of the sclera the bulbar conjunctiva is not firmly attached it is loosely attached so there are chances that this conjunctiva or this transparent layer can move up and down and it's normal right because it's not tightly attached but this conjunctiva is very tightly adherent to the tannins capsule which is 3 mm around the limbus so there is a tannin capsule what tannin capsule is we are not going in that detail but i just want to tell you that the bulbar conjunctiva is loosely adherent to this whitish structure but near the limbus near the corneo near the corneo scleral junction there are uh, around 3 mm right you can see this structure so around 3 mm there is a tannin capsule at which the conjunctiva is tightly attached so at or near the limbus the conjunctiva doesn't move right or it cannot displace or detach so it can move in the region that is away from the limbus but the conjunctiva is very tightly attached to the uh, on the area or near the area of the limbus which is the tannin capsule area that is why it is still or it is staying on the eye right if it is loosely attached all over the eyeball if the bulbar conjunctiva is very loosely attached all over the eyeball what will happen that it can move out right it can move it can be moved out it can uh, we can face very difficulties if it was very loosely attached on all over the eye uh, eyeball 
that is why it is very loosely attached um, away from the limbus and is tightly attached to the limbus or near the limbus so that uh, the bulbar conjunctiva can stay on the eye. So now we have the palpebral conjunctiva. As I have already told you that this is the conjunctiva which is under the eyelid. So the part of the conjunctiva that lie under the eyelid is the palpebral conjunctiva. So the conjunctiva which was on the whitish part was bulbar conjunctiva. Now the conjunctiva that is under the eyelid so that when you avert your eyelid you can see that pinkish area or you can see the, this structure right. So when you word the eyelid, you see these type of blood vessels are moving over here, over this transparent, uh, over this pink orange structure. This blood vessels and the transparent layer is the palpebral conjunctiva, right? And it is very thin. It is present on the upper and lower eyelid as well. So when you word your upper eyelid, you can see the blood vessels, same structure. And when you word the lower eyelid, you can see the same structure. So this is the palpebral conjunctiva and it is very thin and firmly attached. It means that it is not loosely attached. You can't see the separation of this conjunctiva. Uh, uh, as I have told you that bulbar conjunctiva is sometimes seen as moving or displacing from its position um, over the white surface which is clara. But this palpebral conjunctiva doesn't, uh, does not displaces and is tightly attached to the tarsal plate and cannot be dissected easily. So um, the, the tarsal plate is in the, is the structure which is present in the eyelid. So the, this pink orange structure which you observe is basically the tarsal plate and on this tarsal plate there is a structure which is transparent and has many blood vessels. This is the palpebral conjunctiva and the tarsal plate and conjunctiva are tightly attached to each other and cannot be dissected or separated easily right and other thing uh, other than this is that the tarsal plate is the part of the eyelid structure and we are not going in that detail because we are just simply understanding the anatomy of the conjunctiva then we have the third structure of the conjunctiva that is the fornix right so what is the fornix? In the easiest way, the fornix is the uh, fold of the conjunctiva, right? Or if you can say that it is the junction between the bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva. So this whitish area was the bulbar conjunctiva and this pinkish area or this uh, the blood vessels or transparent structure on the pink surface under the eyelid was the palpebral conjunctiva. The junction between the bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva is the fornix. So this fornix is present in the lower eyelid as well as in the upper eyelid because there is a junction between palpebral and palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva on upper and lower eyelids both, right? So the fornix basically is in simple words is a junction between the bulbar and the palpebral conjunctiva right so these are the folds of conjunctiva formed by the reflection of mucous membrane from the lid to the eyeball so you can just understand that it is the junction and it's actually the fold a type of fold which is formed uh, by the separation of eyeball and eye grids, right and it is loose but thick membrane so it is also the loose conjunctiva and but you can see it as a this junction is a little bit thick membrane as compared to the palpebral and the bulbar conjunctiva right next you can see over here this swollen area if i will uh, if you can observe this a little bit swollen area which is more prominent over here is when you uh, see a patient or a person with red eye or any allergy which causes her or his eye to get red, sudden redness in the eye. So that sudden redness is can cause the uh, swelling of the this bulbar conjunctiva. So here, this can be observed in the patients with red eye. So this structure of which is present on the whitish area is the or the sclera is all the bulbar conjunctiva. So this is a sclera. This is a sclera, it's not present on the cornea, it's just present on the sclera, right? So this is the bulbar conjunctiva. 
palpebral conjunctiva is the area that is under the eyelid so this is the eyelid and under the eyelid is the layer which is the palpebral conjunctiva which you can see over here and the junction between the bulbar and the uh, palpebral conjunctiva or this fold this fold you can see is the fornix right conjunctival fornix now we have a fourth part which is the plica semilunaris which you have observed that at the area near your nose right when you observe your eye near the nose you can see that you can see that there is a structure over here near the nose which is a little bit pinkish crescent area and there is some a lot of mass over here in the near the nasal part of the eye so this crescent or this crescent area this pinkish crescent area is the plica semilunaris of the this is the part of conjunctiva which is present on the medial or towards the nose area and it is the a type of fold or is a it is a crescent fold and near this the mass which is over here at the medial corner it is a caruncle right so we are not discussing caruncle we are just discussing conjunctiva so i will tell you that what is plica semilunaris this is a fold of conjunctiva which is in a crescent shape and is present at the nose towards the nose right now this is also a fold of conjunctiva and it is present in the at the near canthus this is highly vascularized there are a lot of blood vessels in it and there are a lot of cells present in it which cells these are the goblet cells now what is the goblet cell what are the uses of goblet cells uh, we are going to discuss in the further video right so here you have to remember that it is a pinkish crescent fold of the conjunctiva and it is present at the near canthus which is highly vascularized means that there are a lot of blood vessels in it right and other than that is that it is rich in goblet cells there are a lot of cells in it at in the plica semilunaris which is the goblet cell so now okay so these were the parts of conjunctiva so we have discussed the part of conjunctiva now what is the structure of conjunctiva or how do the conjunctiva looks like so the conjunctiva has two basic layers one is the epithelium which is the upper layer of the conjunctiva and the lower layer which is the stroma right the epithelium has two to five uh, layers of the epithelial cells so epithelium is the uppermost layer of any structure right so it is the upper membrane of the conjunctiva which is epithelium and there are epithelium is made of some cells which is epithelial cells and there are two to five layers of these epithelial cells of the conjunctiva so if you can observe a conjunctiva there will be two to five layer of the epithelial cells then we have the stroma now the stroma has a lot of blood vessels as you all know that conjunctiva is now we have discussed that it is highly vascularized structure there are a lot of blood vessels in the conjunctiva so the stroma will contain the blood vessels it will have some connective tissues and there are a lot of glands also in the conjunctiva right so uh, the glands which are in the conjunctiva are glands of cross glands of wolfring and there are also some goblet cells i have told you that we will discuss in the further video what are these glands and cells right so we will discuss it in now for the video but you should know that what conjunctiva is made of the first is the epithelium epithelium has some epithelial cell of 2 to 5 layers then we have the stroma in stroma there are a lot of glands connective tissues and blood vessels because we know that blood vessels lie in the conjunctiva and what are the glands present in the conjunctiva they are glands of cross and wolfring and there are some cells which is goblet cells now what are the glands of cross and wolfring they are basically the accessory lacrimal gland as we all know that in our eye there is a lacrimal gland main lacrimal gland but along with that main lacrimal gland we have some accessory a uh, lacrimal gland which helps in the production of the tears right so that lacrimal glands these lacrimal glands are present in the conjunctiva which help in the production of tears 
uh, it has the same function as the lacrimal gland main lacrimal gland has so these two accessory lacrimal glands are cross and wolf ring and they are present in the conjunctiva but where in conjunctiva are the glands found as we have discussed that there are uh, different types of uh, there are different parts of conjunctiva so at which part these glands are found so the gland of cross is present along upper and upper tarsal plate and inferior border of lower tarsal plate so basically uh, if i'll simplify this it means that the cross gland is present under the eyelids right so the gland of cross is found under the eyelids right on the palpebral conjunctiva you can remember it like that also but the gl glands of wolf ring is present at the conjunctival fornix or the junction between the bulbar and conjunctiva uh, palpebral conjunctiva now these glands are basically part of the conjunctiva these were the areas so they are present in the conjunctiva and their function is the same as the main gland has main lacrimal gland has they produce tears or the aqueous layer right so uh, they produce tear and they help in the uh, aqueous layer in the making of the aqueous layer of the tear film so tear film has a layer of aqueous layer which is the layer of water and this water is produced some water is uh, made or the 20% part of a uh, production of the water is the by the accessory lacrimal gland and main or more part is of the ma major lacrimal gland or the big main lacrimal gland right so these are the accessory lacrimal gl glands that helps only they are for the helping or they uh, help a little bit or they uh, contribute right so they help in the production of the basal tears so tears or water is the same thing so uh, they help in the production of the tears now we are over here discussing what is the goblet cell so the goblet cells are the specialized epithelial cells which are responsible for the production of the mucin uh, mucin is a type of you can uh, say that it's a type of mucus the layer which is present in the structures in order to prevent um, dehydration so they help in hydration of the body parts of, of different body parts and uh they are also very important for the one of the component of the tear film which is the mucin layer that helps in the evenly distribution of the tears on the eye and uh, it also helps in uh, you know uh, in less evaporation and the break up of the tears from the eye so that the eye may not get into the dryness towards the dryness so every detail of the tear film or the tear layers we are going to discuss later but one thing you should know that goblet cells are the one who help in the production of the mucin which is important component of the tear film or tear uh, film layer right so this goblet cell is present in the conjunctiva as we have already discussed in the part which is the plica semilunaris and numerous uh, at the nasal area so if i again discuss the plica semilunaris it is present the nasal side so that is why the goblet cells are most in the nasal area right and they are also present in the bulbar conjunctiva so you can also see some of the goblet cell on the surface of the uh, sclera so the area the part of the conjunctiva that is on the sclera and in some some or very little quantity in the inferior fornix right so fornix was the junction between the uh, bulbar and the uh, palpebral conjunctiva right so now uh, here you can see that this is the eye uh, they have just opened the eye if you can see this line this is a normal eye structure but they have widely opened the upper eyelid this is and this is the lower eyelid right so this is the bulbar conjunctiva is over here right this whole this whitish structure is the a uh, bulbar conjunctiva so if you can see that this is all sclera and on this structure is the bulbar conjunctiva so this white structure and along with this some structure is the bulbar conjunctiva the junction between the bulbar and the palpebral conjunctiva is the 
uh, fornic so conjunctival fornic and this area which is under the eyelid is the upper and lower conjunctiva right uh, which is the palpebral conjunctiva so here is the caruncle and the plica semilinaris is the uh, crescent where the most of the goblet cells are present so over here you can see the quantity of the goblet cell they are numerous over here these two structures they are numerous in the plica semilinaris but can also be found in the bulbar conjunctiva and the inferior fornic they are also over here a little bit of quantity is also in the upper eyelid but they are mostly found in the nasal area right so this is all about uh, goblet cells now uh, we have discussed that what is conjunctiva what are the parts of conjunctiva and structure is also has been discussed in this video and we have discussed some glands and the uh, cells which are present in the conjunctiva but what is the blood supply of the conjunctiva what i mean is over here that uh, there are some blood supply to every structure right so which uh, structure is supplying to conjunctiva or this area as you all know that there are a lot of a lot of blood vessels so those blood vessels provide nourishment or bl provide blood to the uh, conjunctiva and the uh, the structures that are around it right so from anterior and posterior conjunctival arteries and veins the conjunctiva gets its nourishment right so there are some uh, vessels and veins and blood vessels can be veins and arteries right so they provide nourishment and they take back the blood to the heart or uh, as well right so they supply some anterior and posterior conjunctival vessels are there that provide the blood supply so which nerve supplies to the uh, conjunctiva there is a, are two type of nerves that supply the conjunctiva one is the sensory nerves which senses or which provides the information right to the uh, from, uh, from the conjunctiva they provide or they sense the information so these are the basically two branches one is the ophthalmic division and the maxillary division of the cranial nerve 5 so basically the innervation of the conjunctiva is by the trigeminal nerve which is a fifth cranial nerve and there are also three further divisions of the uh, trigeminal nerve one is ophthalmic then maxillary and third one is the mandibulary nerve so the nerve supply of conjunctiva is that it conjunctiva is innervated by the ophthalmic and maxillary division of the fifth cranial nerve which is a trigeminal nerve other than that is a sympathetic nerve which sympathetic means that at the state of fight and flight means any at any emergency condition as we know that uh, the conjunctiva is prone to get infected right has more chances to get infected so that is why there are some sympathetic innovations as well at that structure right the sim, uh, it's all similar to the uh, one which uh, innovations which are uh, to the pupil like whenever at the emergency state our pupil get dilated while in normal state our pupil is a bit constricted right so it's similar to this so the nerve supply to the conjunctiva in emergency situation is by the sympathetic plexus or it can also be the nerves that are in the spinal side we are not going in that detail but you should know that there are some uh, sympathetic plexus plexus is the, actually the network of the nerves right so it is actually by the uh, sympathetic innervations are coming from the spinal cord and uh, the sensory information or in the normally state it is by the trigeminal nerve and with the two deviants one is of helmic and other is a uh, maxillary deviant right so this is all about uh, the anatomy of the conjunctiva we are we have discussed in the anatomy what is conjunctiva what are the parts structure and blood supply and what are the function of those glands and cells and along with that we have discussed supply of the conjunctiva in case of any theory comment in comment section and don't forget to like subscribe and share it with your fellows so that they may also get the information about this major topic thank you so much